Hello, Daniel in Lawrenceville, Georgia. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. And firstly, I'd like to thank you for your repeat purchase. This time it's for the Ray-Ban 3447V, color 2503, which is the matte black in the 47 eye size. And I'm going to cut some really cool lenses. It's going to be the Transitions Extra Active Gray with the red flash mirror that has the anti-glare coating on the back side. You can see a little bit of the red mirror now. You'll be able to see a lot of it when I expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light. But let me take the out of your Italian leather hard shell case. This is the Ray-Ban 3447. Of course, you get the Ray-Ban cleaning cloth inside, but I'm going to get you an even nice one from me. And it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping. And I'm going to put that on there when I ship to you so you get all the manufacturer's original packaging, including the original demo lenses, one of which that says Ray-Ban. And hopefully the camera will pick this up. It is the Ray-Ban 3447 color 2503 and the 47 eye size so let me take everything out well the original demo lenses in fact i can just pop those out and i'm going to put it into the tracing element of my blocker but first i want to barcode this number into the system when the paper clips out of the way there we go you are secret agent 1004 so i'm going to hit the start button a little stylus is going to go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars you will get reimbursed for this purchase whether they are prescription or not. Daniel, you know you need prescription. That's why you're getting some really cool lenses with your prescription in them. So in just a moment, that shape will pop up into the computer. It better pop up. Come on, pop, pop. So that is the shape we'll be cutting. We'll move on to the next screen. The computer starts your pupillary distance at 32.5. I'm going to back that down one step down to 32. I do want to raise the optical center up to about 24. Let's do that. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and mark that. We're going to cut at 24 and let's see, take the lens, let's see if this is the right lens. We're going to put it on axis 165, zero out, make sure that's perfect. Yes, put the power drum on minus 150, put the lens in and rotate until the spherical component comes in. And you were the same in both eyes. Minus 150, minus 75 at 165, minus 150, minus 75 at 12. So the power drum's at minus 150. Let me check your astigmatism correction. That looks good. Get everything lined up where it's supposed to be. And put three dots on your lenses if my ink is cooperating. It is a little bit, but I can take my pen and darken that. That is one, two, and 95 okay let's do this mark this one R put that on the platform grab the other lens spin the axis wheel to 12 and I could have left the power drum on minus 150 since it's the same rotate the lens until the spherical component did I put it on 150 hang on 150 on axis 12 there we go. Now the power comes into focus. Check your astigmatism correction. That looks good. And again, we're going to put three dots on your lenses. And it's never when you do it. So, the never-ending battle of drowning this thing with ink. And yes, there is a sponge in there, but I think it's taking the day off. Again, let's put the lens in there. Get everything lined up. That's a little better. Let me darken some of those. And that is the left lens. And if you guys missed any of that, let me recap. <laughs> I'm telling you, that joke's for me. I don't care who else laughs at that. I think that's funny. So, okay, everything's lined up 32, 24 C height. So, the reason why I put those three dots on there is that it tells me that everything is oriented in there perfectly. Get everything lined up where it's supposed to go. We're looking good there. Double check everything. Yes, the lens is large enough. 
and we're going to oh I'm getting ahead of myself this is a block or otherwise known as Jenny from the block and need to attach two double-sided adhesive stickers on there of which I've got two right chan put that on to, let's go ahead and put that on the platform do the second one now on the back is a silver button that is a magnet that's going to do its job twice today the first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet here in the arm let me pull the paper away to make the black side sticky line up the magnet now make sure everything is lined up there perfectly hit that button the arm comes down and places the block onto the right lens we're going to do the same thing now for the lens that ain't right just like me i ain't right line up the magnet pupillary distance is the same for the left eye same for oc height let's move the this thing so that the black marks are not in the way put that the optical center right there in the center of the lens hence the turn optical center make sure that everything is lined up perfectly hit that button now the arm comes down and places the block onto the left lens now this is the edger this is what costs forty thousand dollars it weighs 200 pounds i recommend everyone go out buy their own put it on your kitchen counter then you can cut your own lenses at home and you won't need this guy with the bad jokes to do it for you the actual cutting wheel is this diamond crusted wheel on the far left that's what's going to grind the lens down until it's the final size this wheel in the center is going to put the v-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame let's go ahead and pull the shape up onto the computer 1004 that is the one we'll be cutting these are polycarbonate lenses if they were plastic high index plastic or trivex i would select that i'm only going to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens the back surface of the lens so let's go ahead and put the press that on there firmly put the magnet into the chuck or as i like to call it the charles because i don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck that's right you're getting a free bad joke with every pair of glasses made hit the green arrow which is start the door closes the clamp shuts and then the lens is going to be traced by two dirty white styluses you know if i knew i was going to have company over i could have cleaned a little bit better the door itself the inside but it's being traced make sure the lens is large enough to fit and then the old carpenter saying measure twice cut once it's measuring the thickness at every point to know exactly precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing i could move the bevel forwards or backwards i know i'm moving the lens in the opposite direction but if i move the bevel forwards it would force the lens up more out of the back of the frame if i move the bevel backwards on the lens it would move the lens forward in the frame but with your prescription you're going to have very minimal edge thickness anyway so if you see light flickering in the background that is water there to catch the optical sawdust polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic high index plastic and trivex lenses cut wet meaning that water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle now water will spray onto this lens for the last 20 seconds just to wash away any optical debris that you may see beginning to form on the lens now but polycarbonate lenses are 40 percent thinner and lighter than regular plastic they're virtually unbreakable these are high impact ballistics grade lenses the same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from debris and flying shrapnel it also has 100 percent uva and uvb protection built into the lens we know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes unlike the lotions creams and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied so it's now if you notice your lens is completely flat just like a nickel if i were to take it out now it could stand up on the counter on its own it's now going to drop down onto the bevel wheel to get the v-shaped bevel the knife like edge if you will and I, Daniel I do thank you for your patience these transitions extra active with the cool flash mirrors in six colors do take about two weeks right now the lens is so new they're only being made in one lab one Essilor lab so that's why there's a delay it comes in six colors and let's see if I can remember them correctly silver gold green blue red and pink i was hoping there would be a purple but not yet not yet i got some baltimore ravens fans especially after last night they would love some purple lenses oh that was a tough tough loss last night it was ugly and then i'm trying to go to baltimore to see 
the Steelers play there. And of course, the Ravens fans are not going to sell any of their tickets because they want to see them get eaten twice. So in just a moment, the door will open. I will take the lens out of the Chuck, out of the Charles, dry it off. And, ooh, there's still a little schwarf left onto the lens. I like, ooh, I love it when it comes off in one piece, like lint out of the dryer trap. So run my thumbnail around to make sure I've got the rest of it off. I say like lint out of the dryer trap. I have not done laundry in I don't know how many years. I used to do all my own laundry when I was a bachelor, but my, my dryer literally had a timer and a start button. Now the one my wife has looks like it was designed by NASA. It has all these buttons. By the way, this has a Phillips head screwdriver that I did the old lefty Lucy on. I did not take it out all the way. Tuck it in. Oops, I need to back it off a little bit more. Not just the eye wire screw, but the temple screw because the two of those work in coordination with each other. Come on, come on. Same design as the aviator lenses, they do the same thing. I do not want to take the screw out all the way because sometimes it bounces onto the floor and that becomes a nightmare. There we go, pops right in. That's the other nice thing about the polycarbonate lenses being unbreakable or impact resistant. You can apply more force to them where plastic would crack. And as much as I hate it, I'm going to have to take this down a little bit more. So that fits in there better. It did not close all the way. The right lens always takes the longest. The left lens, once it's the right size, takes a little bit quicker. So I'm going to take this down about a tenth of a millimeter. Hit retouch. Again, the door closes, the clamp shuts. And this time the lens is going to drop down onto the bevel wheel only to take a tenth of a millimeter off this is the di this is a millimeter i'm going to take a tenth of that distance off going around the circumference of the lens until it fits in there perfectly but as I, was, as I was saying my wife's dryer is looks like it was designed by nasa has three or four rows of a digital readout with all these buttons and i don't have a clue on how to do it now yes i can program this you would think Hopefully she's not watching this. If I can operate this, I should be able to operate a washing machine. But then the dryer looks the same way. So Now this is the old carpenter saying you can always cut more off of a piece of wood. You can never add it back on. The same for a lens. I started a little bit large and I worked my way down. It did not fit into the frame perfectly. So that's why I'm going to take a tenth of a millimeter off until this side closes. Oop, oop, it did open all the way. Let me tighten the temple screw which is the outside component of the frame so it can still open up as much as possible open the chuck up thank you Chuck dry everything off run my thumbnail around all right Tuck that in, making sure not to lose that screw. Now let's try tightening it down all the way. And yes, now it fits. There is no gap, which there was the first time. Now I can tighten this screw down a little bit more, a little bit. Okay, now let's do the same thing for the left. We're going to flip that over to the L, press that onto there, put the magnet into the Charles. The Chuck, the Chucky baby, the Chuckster, hit the green arrow, which again is starred in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts, and again, just like before, the lens is going to be traced by the two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape. And just like before, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel, so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, of which you have very minimal amount in a skinny metal frame. Plastic lenses, plastic frames, excuse me, always do a better job of hiding edge thickness. I see a little bit of uh, optical sawdust. I'm going to take off with my fingernail there. And just like before, the lens is going to drop down onto the cutting wheel. And when it does, I'm going to go ahead and continue to work on the right lens. We're going to take this block off, pull the sticker off, 
use my hand approved drying method and put that back in the slot now you remember this one but now that I've moved into my new lab this is one year's worth of, of lenses I've got it looks like the snapchat thing in black I've got baby snapchat I'm gonna add this on there so one day hopefully within a year this will grow to that size we'll move that out of the way so we'll come back down here to the lensometer spin the axis wheel back to 165 put the lens in just above that black dot and measure and I am getting minus 150 exactly halfway between one and two that's because the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter spelled d-i-o-p-t-e-r it starts at zero and goes up in quarter increments from there 0 0.25 0 0.50 0 0.75 and so on you're at minus 150 so essentially you're on the sixth rung of a ladder you are nearsighted everything with your glasses off you can see everything great up close but you need six steps of cor far-sighted correction to see far away now once everything is the correct size you need an additional three steps of astigmatism correction astigmatism is what makes uncorrected astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike or the letters b and f so essentially you have two curves on your eye you have six steps this way and another three steps this way that's how we line up those two curves to make everything nice and crisp and we're going to line that up think of it as the fine two knob and we're going to turn that knob to 165 starting at zero with 90 in the center and 180 being over here we're going to go past the 90 and stop just shy of the 180 meridian at 165 now again you're almost the same for your left eye well hang on let's check the astigmatism correction and we're getting minus two and a quarter one tick mark away from two that's because we add two like signs together so minus 150 and minus 175 combined to make minus 225 minus 225 that's where we're at there now your left eye again same powers but you're only 12 to have you're on the 12th meridian there again 0 to 90 to 180 it looks like 12 and 165 are very far apart just the opposite they're actually only three degrees apart because 165 is 15 degrees away from 180 12 as you can see is 12 degrees away from 180 so you have oblique meridians just there actually less less oblique than others but let me dry this one off ooh lots of sawdust lots of optical schwarf run my thumbnail around now in the old days what I do is I'd run my thumbnail around and once it's all off I would drop it on the table because I'm OCD about cleaning once it's all the way off I would collect it all onto the table in one counter and then wipe it on the floor <laughs> and i promised my wife i would not do that again hopefully she's not watching but hey just for old times sake honey come on remember when we were young and in love and i would throw stuff on the floor where's your friend here it is okay so but here in my new lab i have a cleaning crew that comes in at night vacuums every night empties my trash cans how nice is that um that's the nice thing about my new location that and a little bit of lefty loosey there is that going to be enough we will see if not i'll back it off a little bit more take the lens in tuck it in at the outside corner then using my thumbs i press in at the nose and then up top see how easy the second one goes in tighten that down give that one a little crank so it doesn't fall out that gap is cool i can tighten that a little bit more a little bit oh yeah there we go now the gap is closed in there tighten this up so it's the same yeah we're good to go take the block off hand approved drying method throw that in there put the sticker on this one let's see let's close that flap that one's there we're gonna put that one there on top put it with mini me over there put it in above this dot on the 12th meridian let's spin that back to 12 hello 12 put it in above that black dot read the power and I'm getting minus 150 again exactly halfway between one and two check your astigmatism and we're getting two and a quarter I couldn't have done any better if I had cut these lenses myself your pupillary distance is 32 for the right 32 for the left for a total of 64 I'm going to turn that around and when I hold my PD stick against my thumb on your right lens 
and then look at the left we're getting 64 millimeters so that is cut perfectly too now those who watch my video know that uh, this is the point in every video that I clean your lenses and I mentioned that when you get these in the mail and of course free shipping anywhere in the US but when you get these in the mail there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight however there's an 80 percent chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other that's because 80 percent of people have one ear that is higher than the other and because of that statistic 99 percent of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them but I'm going to put these in standard alignment first also known as a three-point stance now I'm part of that 80 percent and I'll show you in just a moment but I also include a selfie request in every package as well as cleaning instructions on how to care for your cleaning cloths and of course here's my new ones with my social media on there and of course the printers did, did a terrible job of making that print too small but of course Daniel you can take your glasses off and see that up close great everyone else I'm gonna have to go back to the printers back to the drawing board and get new ones made but you're gonna like this one over the one that Ray-Ban gives you now when you get this in the mail that's wrinkled you know that it works because I've just used it to clean your lenses but that's oh standard alignment so I'm gonna put it on the counter and press down there is no wobble when I say wobble I'm part of that 80% when I take mine off and press down they wobble on the counter but they sit level on me for those of you keeping score at home I'm wearing the Ray-Ban 2132 new Wayfair in color 6053 which is the blue crystal to match my shirt because I'm always matching I gotta be cute with what I'm doing flip that over press down there is no wobble close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and they do and that neither one is askew one thing you may want to check sometimes this little metal piece here the barrel can unscrew just but if it does just move it forward put a drop of fingernail polish and then tighten it back up and it'll stay in place so this is what your lenses look like clear with just a little bit of the red mirror showing I'm going to place this into my transitions box and expose them to a strong burst of light as you can see it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for all transition lenses to darken it takes a little bit longer when you come back inside 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 now all transition lenses will turn dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first two weeks they're exposed after that they will work for years with maximum performance the only time the transition signature 7 lenses won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car that's because your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun all day now these are transitions extra active so they will get darker in the sun they will also get darker in hotter weather all transition lenses will get darker when it's 85 and below when they will when it's 95 and above but the extra active are designed to get darker in hotter weather that's the other nice thing about them so and again these have the red mirror coating hopefully the camera is picking that up it is at certain reflections and of course as I keep running my mouth you will see these lenses lightning and hang on one second sorry about that UPS was knocking on the door to drop off my packages from Luxottica all the Ray-Bans Polos Versace's in there as well as the lenses I need to get cut today <clears throat> But again these are <clears throat> the red mirrored lenses and again these are lightening up as I speak so where was I where was I where did I drop off you see UPS they bring me my packages and then make me lose my train of thought but that's it I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut transitions extra active lenses with the red flash mirror for the Ray-Ban 3447 again the cool flash mirror it's only available on the extra active lenses not the signature 7 there are some new colors available for the signature 7 lenses but in my opinion none of them are as cool as the red mirrored and so I can do this in any prescription and again they come in silver gold green blue red and pink so far red seems to be the most popular I'm a blue guy I've got to try them on the blue I'll show you as I do that a little bit later on but again thanks for watching and if you have any questions you can email me directly at free prescription lenses at gmail.com or simply click the contact me button on the website but people tell me every once in a while you can't get through you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at free prescription lenses.com and everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses thank you